Think not the Lord came to peace on this earth. He came to give us a sword. Shalom in the name of the Lord, everybody. We've got time of night watchmen. Time of night watch, time of commentary, information, Bible, prophecy, and stuff. And hey, y'all ready to be wow well today? I mean, I, I know there's a lot of things going on. I want to I cover some things a, a friend of mine, a sister of mine, brought to her attention. And, uh, and I think we got to make sure our eyes are on the right thing. Eyes on the prize, so to speak. And of course, in the previous videos, we talked about learn to stand on your own two feet in your faith before you start subjecting yourself to other people, their ministries, their doctrines, and all that stuff. It kind of saves you from the grief and aggravation of finding out you've been teaching or been taught some false doctrine. Uh, my eschatology, I guess you might say, is my own, yet uh, I believe what I believe only because what has been shown to me. Uh, whatever God has revealed to you, hopefully it all coincides. Uh, there's a lot of people with their books out there and stuff like that. You know, I just, you know... Yeah, we're going to get into that because, man, I'll tell you, what a crazy week. This might run a little long because there's this quite a lot of information here. So we'll try to take it step by step as usual. All right, so the big question as of late is trust the plan. Have you heard this before? Or trust, you trust Donald Trump, you trust the plan. Uh, forgive me, but trust does not come easy. I mean, that's just the way I am. That's the way I'm geared. I don't know. I've seen my fair share of bad things in this world, and trust, you know, trust is not like it's something that should be taken. Oh, trust me. Oh, trust me. You ever hear that? Say, oh, trust me. No, I don't trust you. <laughs> you have to earn my trust. You don't just take my trust. So don't just assume I'm going to trust you. And there's a lot of things that have been addressed in regards to Donald Trump and the whole Q phenomenon that makes things a little bit suspect. Of course, the other side is working really hard in opposition in the areas of propaganda, and this is an information war. And uh, I'm not going to hold Trump or anything else at fault here, but I'm trying to be a little more, I'm trying to be objective. I mean, that's the key thing about become, being the night watchman. I have to be objective. If I allow myself to get all caught up emotionally, I'm in a lot of trouble. So uh, so bear with me as we go into this area of trusting the plan. Really? Anyway. So again, let, let's talk about this in brief, or maybe more in detail. I mean, I'm not going to go into the whole QAnon thing because that's, that's enough to... Yeah, digest for several weeks, if not a month of the year. Uh, let's just go into basic biblical principles. Yeah, there you go. Biblical principles. I can't get wrong with that. <sighs> All right, so let's go on. All right, so we'll start with the Ten Commandments. In Exodus 20 and 1, it says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Hmm. I mean, that seems pretty square and in your face. We know Ten Commandments, generally, most people do. If you don't, you should. Most people know by heart. I actually do know by heart, but I might have to rattle my brain to get there. But the point of the matter is, is like one God, one person or persons, if you will. I know we, people argue about the whole Trinity stuff. I'm not, I'm not even getting into that theology. It's whatever. The whole point is worship the one God. And, and of course, of course, God is a jealous God. So keep that in mind as we continue on this area. All right. So the thing about being the night watch, like I said before, this is not about bringing about the vision per se, or even being skeptical, 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 <laughs> you're so skepticism. Boy, I am tired, but to think objectively. All right. So get the emotions out of the equation and just think objectively. There's a lot of things I see, of course, is not Night Watchmen, and a lot, a lot of it just brings the question, like, what are these people thinking? And uh, truthfully, I don't know what everybody's thinking, but there's this general fervor of thoughts that just don't coincide with the Word of God. And that's when the lights go off, and the flags start flying, and say, yeah, there's something to be talked about. So we're going to talk about that. All right, so I once said Donald Trump would make a great antichrist. I, I did. I said this. I, I really shared, I shared this with a few people. I mean, he would. Uh, if it's too, my, these are all saying, if it's too good to be true, chances are it is. Uh, he has power. He's wealth. He's got charisma. He's charismatic. And yes. And then there's people like Kim Clement who prophesy of the coming of Donald Trump. And then there's Mark Taylor and multi-million dollars worth of books he's put out there. The Trump prophecies unfold. Very popular people. And people just, just 
go towards these people like the sheep they are and they go ooh la wow god's talking through them and and you know the thing that gets me god talks through me too and i don't expect the big crowd nor i expect to make billions and millions of dollars on my books and there's only one book anyway i mean you want to read my book it's just my testimony it's not that expensive a bit but i'm not in for that i'm just in and i've talked about this before this is all about your relationship with god it says, why doesn't God talk to me? Well, why isn't God talking to you? I mean, that's one of the main things that's important when you come together in fellowship with the body of Christ. We all need to coincide what God is teaching us and what's telling us. And I see a lot of contradictions out there, which just doesn't add up to me. So when I see people become popular in the quote, quote prophetic, or they put out these books, and, 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 and then they start, I don't know, just, I don't know, I, I, again, the trust factor. <laughs> And you know what, you're going to see why I go there. All right, so for me in my own personal walk, I talked about my dreams back in July 2016, about the two black horsemen, the tsunami, which I believe has come, uh, both be moving up to higher grounds, which I, I believe we're going into right now. And just a lot of things are going on. But again, these are my revelations, my dreams, okay? This is the Lord talking to me in his way to me, to which I share to you because I love you, and a lot of you are my brothers and my sisters. Others, well, you know, Domino's, Pop, Deputy, stay off my grass. So, so I share these things with you. And basically, I'm looking for you to discern with me, if not for me. And, you know, we've talked about the four things, correction, reproof, rebuke, as well as exhortation. I don't need to get fluffed up. I don't need attaboys all the time. Uh, a great thank you is wonderful, and, and I do get that. But you know, if I'm wrong or error in something, if, if or if you have a, a different spin on it or a different take on it, I'm all ears because you know I'm not the know-it-all of every every know-it-all. I just know the know-it-all, and that's pretty much how that goes. All right. So anyway, and then of course we talked about the signs, Matthew 24:29, the blood moon tetra on, on the Jewish feast, of course, and then of course Matthew 24:30, once in 7,000 years, the 23rd September 2017 which was Rosh Hashanah, which is basically, as I look, as the kickoff, the time of Jacob's trouble, which we addressed that Jacob, I mean, I mean, think about this for a second. What was Jacob in trouble for? And how long was he in trouble? Okay. I mean, I mean, think, think on those terms, because whatever the preaching out there, teaching, it's not from the Bible, I tell you, they're just, they're spinning stuff to their own accord. I think that's why all of them are so confused they can't handle it because it just, nothing's adding up to their uh, eschatology, doctrine, theology stuff. So I'm just going what I see. And remember we talked about that one scripture about how we're looking through glass darkly, seeing only in part, then we come, come face to face. Well, I don't know, seeing this Revelation 12 sign in the heavens, that's a pretty face to face to me. I mean, even the Tetrad going back, I mean, that's pretty face to face to me. I mean, what do you think? I mean, am I wrong? Mm. Anyway, all right, so then, of course, October 2017, which is right after the, the, uh, the sign of heaven, we have the QAnon phenomenon, an invitation to the Great Awakening by where we go when we go all, which it's it's kind of cute. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. OK, all right. I got my ears open. I'm curious, uh, but I'm not infatuated over the idea this is going on again. You know, where is your trust at? OK. All right. And I know a lot of you have that out there. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I get scolded from quote unquote patriots and QAnons like, oh, you're a doubter and blah, blah. You know, well, it's not that I doubt. I'm just, I, I got my, my priorities right. What are my priorities? Well, there's my dreams, of course, 2017 as well, too. That will be return of liberty and justice to the land. Again, if this be the Lord that's telling me this, this is the Lord I'm looking forward to, to making these happen. And we're watching right before our very eyes. Then, of course, there was the word I was given about the Sandman, rebuke the Sandman. It's February 2nd of 2020, and we know that the Sandman is basically the COVID-19 pandemic. And essentially, that the Sandman is the evidence thereof. How? Well, we're going to get into that. All right. This is what <laughs> essentially you have a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to explain this. I mean, I never thought so many people could be so stupid. Uh, I mean, the whole mask thing. I mean, anybody take biology one-on-one, -on -one, they know bad masks for long-term. It's a bad thing. You need air to breathe. You, you, it, it, no, this is not going to stop a virus from getting And, and the virus gets you, your, your immune system will kick up, and God willing, you'll survive it. And we already see that where are all the dead bodies, like the zombie apocalypse we have out there. And all of these mindless people just totally with the mask. And, ay vey, it's depressing. Uh, 
This is amazing. I just don't get violent when I see this kind of stuff. So basically, we're witnessing the zombie apocalypse out there. I mean, seriously. I mean, look at these poor souls. Why aren't you wearing your mask? I mean, really? Really? Uh, uh, let's go on. Anyway, so of course, we got another word about Enter the Maelstrom. This is back in May. And what we're seeing basically churches and uh, banks, a lot of things are just going to be pulled into this, this whole Maelstrom thing and basically being taken off the face of the planet and bringing in something totally new. Of course, we know it's the precursor of the coming of the Messiah. And things have to be purified and cleansed. And if it's, if it's not Ty Jacob's trouble, I don't know what is. Uh, we've, we've seen, I'm sure there's plenty of stupid movies out there. I've seen some of them. They make me crazy, but, you know, it's like, I think it's more the subtlety. If you can't sense that we're in a time of Jacob's trouble, then maybe, you know, go climb a mountain and ask to commune with God. Or I could be wrong. But, again, I'm just looking at the signs and just go with what God has given me so far. So we are in the time of the maelstrom. You can see that clearly. <laughs> Speaking of which, there was a lady today who was all upset that, oh, my faith has been shaken. I went to my church and we're required to wear masks. And and if you're not coming with a mask on, they have special places outside of church where you can look inside of their church. And yada, yada, yada. And, and then you have these other guys who says, and Jesus wore a mask, which is straight up blasphemy. That's why I would want to move aside before lightning comes down and hits them. So, I mean, seriously, it, it's this is bad for them, but not for me. But again, this is this is the time the maelstrom, all the stuff be sucked down. I imagine the 501c3 churches and all these Laodicean types, lukewarm types, and all the other types that just don't make the grade will be pulled under as well too, economically, socially, and the list goes on. All right, so the maelstrom continues. You see this, what's going on around us. Of course, we have uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. Of course, we know about the human trafficking, things like nature. People are being arrested. Of course, it's not mainstream media, but we, we pretty much kind of know that's going on. The uh, COVID-19 is still being pushed as if it's something serious. Mask this, mask that. Uh, to me, it's just another form of flavoring. Uh, I don't know. Of course, we have the fires and explosions, the riots as well, too. Again, this is also part of the maelstrom. I mean, tribulation is, is a shaking up. I mean, if... If there's any time to settle into God and his word, this is the time to do it. And also personal reflection as well, too. I've been having to do that a lot lately. I mean, a lot of, I mean, a lot of introspection. It's really, it's even annoying sometimes. <laughs> I, kind of admit. I mean, you know, you get to my age, you think, I have issues? Really? I still have issues, Lord? Seriously? So, so, so I'm addressing those as I go. But, but the mastermind does continue, and we're seeing these things going around us. If you've been keeping close eye with the whole QAnon thing, you know about uh, Huber and uh, Durham and and Barr and all the other things going on. It's it's, it's getting busy and it's getting heated up as as it was foretold. And we're gonna address that too because that's one of those things that make you go home. All right, so the maelstrom continues. All right, so Matthew 24, 4. I, I want to put this out because this is very important. This is probably one of the key points of this entire message. And Jesus said. And answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And many, 24 11 says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And then 24 24 says, For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, underline, if it were possible. They shall deceive the very elect. So because God, God has his hands on us, he has anointed us, we've become his elect. Uh, if it were possible, we would get sucked up in all this deception as well, too. So praise God for that. But it doesn't mean I don't make it a point to be aware or cautious because I could be easily deceived on something and, and go left instead of right or right instead of left. So, you know, I'm human. Sorry if that offends people, but I am human. I do make mistakes, and I have made a fair share over the years. And uh, the fact that I'm even reconciling certain things in my life as well, too. And clearly, i got to work on that. But the, but the point of the matter is, you know, don't let yourself be deceived. Don't let yourself get caught up in things of this world that draws you away from the very one thing that you should be focusing on, and that's God. All right. So we talk about balances, the checks and balances. In Philippians 4, 5, it says, Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
I was just talking to one of my sisters the other day, just asking for more um, uh, discernment, which is a great prayer. I mean, we all should be praying a prayer. Lord, just give me discernment because this is just getting more nuts every day. I mean, I know your, your hands in the midst of it. Uh, I have visions, dreams, you know, whatever, however God is answering those, those questions to you. This is that you can see it in the mix of it. And, you know, sometimes you just got to step back, disconnect, and just keep the peace with God, which Philippians 4, 7 says. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, this, this, this is the, the place we all have to be. This is the place we all have to work for or work on, if you mean. And it's really not the heart. Again, it's about disconnecting to all this, well, the maelstrom. And, and allow the peace of God just dwell within us. So again, 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which is peace is shalom, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And it's the interesting thing about peace. If you've ever been in a hot air balloon, uh, it's that kind of peace. I mean, you're out there, you're disconnected. It's, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's peaceful. I mean, that's probably the only natural way I can explain what that's like. And, but that's, that's the key point. And I ask a lot of my brothers and sisters sometimes, where is your peace? Dear God, person, where's your peace? <laughs> anyway, all things in moderation. Okay, trust in the Lord, another major factor to this entire message today. Let's go to Jeremiah 17.5. It says, thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and make it flesh his harm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Hmm. In Psalm 118, 8 and 9, it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Yeah? Psalm 43 and 4, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. And Isaiah 31, whoa, it says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not into the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. And finally, 2 Timothy 3.13 through 17 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So your focus should be on the Lord. I don't care what's going on. I mean, it could be hurricane, typhoon, earthquake, tornado, eruption, whatever. A meteor be coming down. Your trust should be in the Lord and your peace should be with him. It's, it's that simple. And I know it can be challenging, especially if you're watching the boob tube. Stop watching the boob tube. I mean, just don't. Just take your eyes off that nonsense for a while and just enjoy the peace of God because that's that's first and foremost. And believe it or not, that's also a witness that you do have a relationship with him. Hmm. All right. So trust the plan. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I mean, the only plan I know is God. <clears throat> what the Lord told me years ago of how the fate of mankind is sealed, we come to the end of all things. It's his plan. I mean, the fact I'm mentioning Jacob's trouble is like, we're in his plan. This is part of his plan. So trust in God's plan, not the Q plan. I don't trust Q. I mean, I, I get it. And there's a lot of things about Q, which I'm going to bring up, is gonna be, that's got my suspicions going, which is really, just stick with me with this. All right. <clears throat> so Matthew 10, 16, it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, of course, within the whole Q phenomenon, I keep on hearing the uh, the art of war. Sun, Sun Tzu's art of war. I think we discussed this before. Sun Tzu's art of war, if you ever got around to reading, it really is all about deception. Is anybody not hearing me right now? The art of war is about deception. Okay? Whereas the Bible is about the truth. Do you see where the problem is already? I mean, it should, I mean, lights should be going off right now saying, hmm, okay. Because I tell some of my, my friends and my sisters and brothers that it's all smoke and mirrors, so you really got to keep, you really got to keep your eyes on the Lord here. So again, the art of war, it's about deception, where the Bible is about truth. So which one are you can hold on to? All right, again, you can say, well, night watchman, you have trust issues. You know what? I do. <laughs> I do have trust issues. Anyway, just something to think about, all right? <clears throat> I'm not trying to dissuade you. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I will be voting for Donald Trump come November if we all live that long. <laughs> but the bottom line is that just be aware of these things that are going around around us. And do not lose your eyes on God. Keep them on them. 
All right, the other thing. <clears throat> now, this is what this is the thing that gets me. This is going back to uh, Mark Taylor and and Clem Clement. And says, my question is, how did they know Donald Trump was to be our president? I mean, I mean, I mean, you see by the image here, even on on uh, the Simpsons, this is years ago. How do they know? I mean, according to Clem Clement, Mark Taylor, and all these people, they know because God told them. All right, well, you know. Before we go to that, I want, I want to use this. This is a phraseology you read in Sherlock Holmes books. He goes, once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. All right, so how do they know in advance, whether it be the creators of uh, The Simpsons or Mark Taylor or all these people who say they, they've heard from God, whatever the case may be? Uh, I don't know. I, again, this is where it gets interesting. So once you eliminate the impossible... Whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. All right. I always hear the term, future proves past. The Q, I call this Q hypothesis. All right. Everybody's seen, well, mostly everybody's seen the movies Back to the Future. I don't know if, when it was back in 1968, 70s, there was a thing called the time tunnel. But people going back in time, or even forward in time, if you will. It's interesting, in Daniel 12, 4, it says, And knowledge shall be increased. Well, you know, the thing is, in, when it comes to technology stuff, and this is kind of, this is where it kind of puzzles me, because I'm always thinking, well, God would not allow us to cross the line. Certain lines, he wouldn't allow us to cross, like time travel. But yet, if future proves past, how do they know? Do you see where I'm getting at? It's like all these insiders know that Donald Trump was going to become president. How did they know? I mean, you could say, well, the Lord told him. I said, okay, that's nice. But you see, for me, it, 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 I don't get those kind of messages. Mine, well, let's see. For example, why is it when you get a prophetic word, this is me, it is both vague as well as abstract. I'll give you an example. This is back August uh, 2011, 2000, 2001. This is, these are the words I got. This is in the middle of the night I got these words. We are about to relive the days of Pearl Harbor. This is like a week away from 9-11. We are about to relive the days of Pearl Harbor. All right. That's how my messages are. They're vague and they're pretty abstract. And if, you, if you've been following along so far, it says they are. But to say, yeah, Donald Trump's going to be president of the United States, I, I'm suspicious of that. Again, the trust factor there. <clears throat> but, I mean, I, I mean, God bless these people giving that prophecy, but I'm not going to follow up to anybody but the Lord. I mean, that's, that's really bottom line here. I mean, I don't want people to trust in me as if I'm the one way to the truth. I want you to seek that relationship. Again, standing on your own two feet. In your relationship with God, you know we're not dependent on each other as much as we're dependent on God. But we, when we do come together, we confirm. We again correction, reproof, rebuke, exhortation. So again, everything I receive from the Lord is always abstract as, as well as vague. Until of course it comes to fruition, then well, that's what He meant. Okay, so that's why that kind of puzzles me. So is there time traveling involved here? And you're part of the inside crowd that knows these things in advance. If future proves past, uh, how do you know? I mean, really, how do you, how do you know? I, I really love to hear the, the, the answer about that. So if it's too good to be true, hence trust the plan. All right, so he's given us everything we want. I mean, literally, Donald Trump is literally, he's, he's fulfilled all his promises. He's still fulfilling his promises of what he's going to do. But again, he's given us everything we want. The wall, reduce taxes, taxes deregulation, free and fair trade, and the list goes on. And he's given us everything he wants. But I'm familiar with this scenario on something else as well, too, that leads me to question and caution. <clears throat> All right, this is a reason, the reason why not to trust the plan. They are offering us a perfect utopian society. I don't know if anybody see, remember any of these movies or TV series. Uh, v, of course, I think it's back in the 70s. Then it's going back for the Twilight Zone to serve mankind. Now, if you haven't seen this, they came in peace. And he offers all these one of those things. They, they made us healthy, uh, healthy. They gave us technology. And, and things were great. But the thing, that book, that book they handed us to serve man was actually a... <laughs> Yeah, it's a cookbook. <laughs> yeah, to serve man. Ugh. Yeah, it was a cookbook. So I mean, this is another reason why I don't trust them. I mean, forgive me if I have trust issues, but they're offering us a perfect utopian society, which again leads me to doubt or question. 
But again, you know, I'm not going to chase after QAnon as if I'm totally faithful and blindly stupid as well as Donald Trump. This is it's almost too good to be true. And of course, as it was in these movies and TV series, yeah, The Serve Man, it was a cookbook. Yeah, not, not good. So again, just, I'm just throwing that out there. Believe me, it took me two or three days to put this together because apparently it's just something to keep your eyes on or think about. <clears throat> all right, so who is your Messiah? I mean, it really comes down, who is your Messiah? I mean, I see all these wonderful, cool pictures with Donald Trump and girded up and this and that. And even have his face on other uh, actors during other movies where he's killing and destroying and doing kinds of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. But John 14, 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And it really comes down to it. Who's your Messiah? Don't get me wrong. I love Donald Trump. I, I, he's a great guy. <clears throat> I mean, he proves his worth. You can tell him by his fruits. He's a good man. I will be voting for him. But the question is, I mean, who's your Messiah? I mean, this, this great following he has. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So I want to close with a statement. And this is one I repeated before. It's Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, emphasis, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I hope I got my point across today, because this this is something that needs to be talked about openly and not be frightened whatever people say. No, I'm not going to jump on board blindly and say, oh, yeah, this is a great thing. This is a God thing. No, I'm, I'm going to follow the Lord and see where he leads, see where his spirit leads me, what his word speaks to me. It will be visions, dreams, visitations, even that reading the Bible, whatever the case would be, doing your homework, <clears throat> finding that peace beyond human understanding. And that, my friends, is what makes this very interesting times. Woo! Well, it's time of night, Watchmen. Time of night, Watchmen. Time of commentary, information, Bible, price, stuff. See ya. Don't want to be ya. And remember, there's only one way, one truth, and one life. In Jesus' name, amen.